Speakers and Cleats, the podcast. Welcome back to the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. It is Wednesday, September 20th. This is our 27th episode of the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. It is our high school hype squad episode, so subbing out the older gentleman for some young blood here <laughs> and having Zach Hedrick join us since we do uh, Friday Night Fever and uh, the Friday Night High School Review here on uh, Fox and News 4. So. We will uh, be diving into our TNL game of the week, Edison and Sam Houston, as well as uh, review the last week in high school football. So, as as always, we will start with uh, t- number twenty-seven. So, actually, not we don't always start with twenty-seven, but you know what I mean. Uh, twenty-seven. Who comes to mind for you, Zach? Hmm. I think right off the bat, pun intended, since it's baseball, Mike Trout. <laughs> Um, and of course, since we're in Houston Astro territory, then it's like Jose Altuve. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other sports who else wore 27, but I'm, nothing's leaping out to me. There's not a lot of like older names or anything like that. So there's not a lot of older names. I feel like 27 is more of a new generation null kind of number. Like, mm-hmm. like 27, the oldest one I thought of was like Vladimir Guerrero when he was with the angels. Vladdy. Yeah. Vladdy. That's, so that's, that's a good a, one. It's a solid one. New hall of famer. Vladimir Guerrero and Mike Trout obviously came to mind like right away. That was yeah. the first. That was the first one. Yeah. Since he's basically our heir as Willie Mays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, now he can't stay healthy and he might be traded, but that's not. Uh, you know, that doesn't go on his legacy or anything. But Jose Altuve is a great one since he's basically Houston's savior. It yeah, all, it all cro- kind of started crossed him. the two thousand hit barrier recently. Uh, maybe if he stays healthy, he's kind of around the thirty three mark. So. 200 hits per season, that's a tall order, so he could maybe be one of those dark horses to reach that 3,000-hit milestone. Uh, you can debate whether the trash cans aided in that or not, <laughs> so we'll see. I might be wrong, but just off the top of my head, it seems I think the last Astro that got 3,000 hits was Craig Biggio. Yeah, it would be Biggio, Bagwell, those guys. Yeah, I, think, I, I don't know why that's sticking in my head, but it's, I feel like it's Craig Biggio. Uh, anyway, I love doing that at the beginning of the podcast. So this week, we've got a very interesting week four of high school football. Some teams coming off a bye that are looking to remain undefeated. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll talk main takeaway surprises from week four. Go over our TNL top 10 for 5A, 6A, and then our sub top 10 for 1A through 4A. Got our TNL matchup, Golden Bears and the Hurricanes of Sam Houston. So let's get right into it. Uh, Zach, week four. Had some good games. Had some had some weird ones too. There were some good ones. Um, Saturday, really, there were there was lots of great action. Uh, week week four on Friday, not too many surprises on Friday night. I feel like Alamo Heights uh, in in a undefeated matchup with McCollum, really kind of you know exerted their dominance and, and showed that you know yeah they're they're still right. the cream of the crop. But McCollum still, I think they could be a player in that district along with Burbank. You know they'll they'll kind of I think be fighting it out for that second spot in that district and then on saturday there were some really good games uh, at least on the schedule madison roosevelt churchill johnson then we also had another undefeated matchup that was kind of the game of the night on saturday between john jay and warren uh it was a close game in the fourth and then john jay really just kind of ran away with it in the final closing minutes right. so really i think that was kind of the surprising part there because john jay you know they kind of snapped a long streak and and now they're off to an historic start you know four and oh first time in a long time uh, I believe so it, it'll be interesting to see what what John Jay does this week and and see if you know they can keep this train rolling right they play Stevens on uh, 7 30 on Friday I believe and them beating Warren this week was the biggest surprise that I saw mm-hmm. 30 to 14 like you said close one in the fourth quarter and then they kind of ran away pun intended with it uh, their running game is stout. They have some players on that team that are going to make a, a big, uh, big splash in the 29-6A d- yeah, district. Yeah, and we talked about them last week. Jackson Gutierrez, Jack Mota. You know, uh, Mota's having a really good, you know, it's, he's almost, I think, rushing nearly 10 yards per touch or something yeah, like that. Just it's get him ridiculous. the ball. <laughs> but when they get down to the, to the red zone, that's where they're really dangerous because then it, whether it's Gutierrez or um, – 
or, or Mota, you know, which one. It's kind of pick your poison. But also the John Jay defense, they're off to a good start. There's a there's a kid over there, Elijah Baldwin. He's six seven. I mean, <laughs> defensive end. Jesus. It's just crazy. And then the defense too, they've had seven interceptions so far this season. So it's like they can turn the ball over and, and of course when you get your offense more possessions, that's always gonna help. It, that whole um that whole district's interesting when you have Soto now that's kind of creeping up and they still haven't allowed a point. They were coming off a of bye week this mm -hmm. week. But then you have Jay, you have Warren, who's still in the top 10. You got a Harlan in there. You still have Brennan, who's playing better, still not to their standard, but Brennan right. playing better. You have such a deep district there yeah. that all of the games from here on out for the last six weeks are going to be dogfights. Yeah, it'll it'll be a, a fist fight to the end here uh, for those four playoff spots between that district. So that's that's going to be a real fun district to watch. And, and each week, I mean, it, even before... In years past, it's always a tough out, and now even more so with all these teams playing so well. Yeah, and then you have that Johnson-Churchill game. Johnson to really took it to him and showed that they're kind of the class of that. But, I mean, Ron Harris, there's like words. There's no words to describe how good he and his program are, and Churchill being 3-0 and this year was a surprise kind of in and of itself after the year they had last year. But the way that they still compete throughout those games is always, always impressive when it comes to Ron Harris and the Churchill Chargers. Yeah, no doubt. I mean... Churchill, it's it's always a good program and, and tough. I mean, it's it's just Johnson. I think it was just too many playmakers. Uh, they had early turnovers. Uh, I, I think first possession for Churchill, they threw a pick. And it's just when you're going against Johnson, you can't do that. You can't give Ty Hawkins more opportunities. And uh, from, you know, they scored first three possessions and it was off to the races. Smithson Valley beating Wagner was also kind of a, not a statement, but kind of a, I mean, a statement would be the best term for it, but beating them 24 to seven. We always, we've been talking about Wagner being like that up and coming team after beating mm -hmm. Liberty Hill week one, Smithson Valley still proving that they're the cream of the crop. Yeah. And it's, it's always tough going into Ranger stadium, uh, especially when, yeah. you know, you're on the, you're on the cusp of making history for coach Larry Hill, uh, him getting his 300th victory, you know, that, that was a tall order, but you know, Wagner still, yeah, they're, they're going to be a, they're going to be a good team down the stretch too, I think, especially just, they, they kind of, turnovers kind of crept up and got them a little bit just you know and and that always is is going to be crucial you gotta you gotta take care of the football uh even more so at the high school level biggest um kind of closest game was our tnl game last week yeah Bur that was, wasn't that fun well that was so much fun <laughs> <laughs> bernie champion and canyon coming down to the final kick two seconds left and the and bernie champion pulling it off with the field goal and then you got goldberg running around the sidelines saying who's next <laughs> like it was hilarious it was like it was such a great uh environment to be a part of <laughs> yeah uh i i remember so going you know i was i was back here i obviously watching the game as best i could but then when i went out uh, for our Fox sports cast, it was still, I think Bernie champion was trailing by seven or something like yeah, that. And then 21, I think during the sports cast, I heard, Oh, you know, Bernie champion tied it up. So, you know, 31, 31. Wow. And then I remember going over back to start editing again. That's when, um, saw your bully picked off right what the, a, the, and what a crazy interception that was that, oh my god what a great play i mean coming off finger tipped it he uh he he had the game tying touchdown yep two receptions so that was really cool to see making plays on both sides of the ball and then yeah you know nathan bell coming in and just you know stone cold right uh <laughs> you know going in and, and kicking that field goal that was that was really neat to see it was just, it was a great great game and sawyer bully making the interception he literally like it he caught the back of the ball like it was huh. it was so good i was watching it from the sideline like holy crap he caught that i couldn't yeah i couldn't see how close it was but <laughs> it was just close. just a great play you know uh running with that receiver and then uh he he went for the ball he played the ball which yeah. is which you know that's that's how you want to do it and coach i mean coach leonard and all those guys at big canyon they played a fantastic game and no I doubt yeah. i talked to him at halftime and he was like we know that we're up right now i think they were up 24 14 at half He's like, we know we're up, but we have to come out and kick them in the mouth right now. And they did. And they came out and they scored on their first possession. I think it was then 31-14. And um, Champion just didn't blink. Cham Champion came back, scored the next 20 points unanswered to win the game uh, on the last second field goal. And they just didn't blink. And speaking to Coach Ellis afterwards, he was like, yeah, that's what we do. We don't, we don't back down from a challenge. And Canyon's a good team. Yeah. 
Coach, so. Coach Leonard, I, both those guys, you know, in their first year of head coaching, taking over for programs. Uh, we saw what Kenny did last year with Deuce Adams, who's no longer there anymore. But Coach Leonard, I think, you know, he's he's going to be a pretty good fit for that Canyon program. And obviously, you know, off to a good start, you know, competitive in all these games. So it should be a lot of fun. And then, yeah, you know, Bernie Champion, they've they've got a good matchup here looking at it. I believe it's Buta Hayes that they're facing. Mm-hmm. So they're a three and one team. And a, another big district matchup for Bernie Champion. That one is on the road for the Chargers. So it's it's going to be another good test for them this week coming off that emotional win. Right, and I mean, Bernie Champion has the best name, last name for a quarterback in the in the whole uh, region here Jordan with his Ballin. last name being Ballin. Yeah. I mean, he's, he was balling on Thursday. Let yeah. me tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's get to uh, our TNL top ten for Week Four. Reagan, they had a bye week. They're three and zero right now. Their next game going to be at uh, Gus at seven o'clock on Saturday. So probably expect them to get to four and zero next week. Uh, kind of talked about Johnson already a little bit. They beat Churchill thirty three to seven. Lauren Bubba Johnson, uh, we'll call him his his middle or his uh, his uh, nickname, nickname. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Is Bubba so. As and it's pretty apt, you know, 140 yards and two touchdowns for him. So yeah, they they've got a, a three-headed monster on offense yeah. with Ty Hawkins, as you mentioned, Bubba, and then King Johnson at receiver. It's it's again another pick your poison kind of situation when you're going against the Jaguars. It's like who do you defend? You try and do as best you can, but those three guys, playmakers, that can you know make it make a house call at any point. Right, and contrary to popular belief, you, your last name doesn't have to be Johnson to play, <laughs> to, play to, be a, to be a playmaker on this Kinda team. Kind of helps, though. Yeah, I mean, it, I can't imagine calling one of those games like Johnson <laughs> to Johnson for Johnson into the there end zone. Go. Yeah. <laughs> so Steele is number three. They haven't played a district game yet because their district is so small. It's only five or six teams. You only have five district games. So they're actually playing a California team um coming up they just beat midland legacy 62 to 31 convincing yeah yeah, they're showing their medal pun intended um they're playing birmingham california uh from california excuse me uh 7 30 at lenhoff on friday so after that though then they start their district schedule and they get into the meat of it they have new Braunfels. that game is our next tnl game Mm -hmm. then they have uh san marcus and then east central so Looking forward on Steel's schedule, where, do you see them tripping up at all? Do you see like any way, maybe New Braunfels, they, they, maybe they might trip that, up there? that could be because it's that's usually a, a pretty – New Braunfels is always a, a competitive squad. They're, right. they're going to you know never quit. Those unicorns. Uh, Glenn, Glenn Mangold always has you know a good program, and then they've got some playmakers up there too. We'll, we'll kind of get into New Braunfels later uh, as we you know kind of come up to the T&L schedule. But uh, I don't – the way Steele's playing right now, after sure they they lost to Lake Travis, but since then, man, it's they've looked darn they're, good. They're rolling, like, man. Yikes! I mean, so I this matchup with playing a California team. I mean, they you're from California, you, <laughs> they can ball out out there too. I know. I know our football is really good out in California. So this this will be another interesting test for them. I mean, but after these past two weeks, looking pretty convincing against Hutto and Midland Legacy. Uh, Coach Signs and, and that Steel Group, Chad Warner, everybody over there, they're they're starting to to look like the Steel Knights. I come from the area where they it was Modern Day and then everybody else. Right. So <laughs> Modern Day, the uh, school that I think Bryce Young went went to, uh, I think it was uh, Carson Palmer, Matt Liner, you know, a all long of, list long of list of great quarterbacks. It NFL, yeah. It's basically a USC feeder school. So. <laughs> um, so they they got their next game against Birmingham on uh, Friday at Lenhoff, and then Harlan is four. Harlan another convincing win this week. They got they beat O'Connor forty nine twelve. O'Connor scored the first six points, and then uh, Harlan scored the next six touchdowns. So mm-hmm. they're just they're continuing to show how good they are. They have a good t- test this week. They play Warren Saturday seven p.m. at Ferris. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, they can't. I don't. You know. Warren coming off a tough loss to Jay. Sure, yep. they, they're they're no longer in those ranks of unbeaten's. But again, don't watch out for Tony Mesa because you know they Warren can make some plays here on offense. So, and they were they were with Jay for for a long time. Again, we didn't kind of see the ending of it because you know we're not there for the fourth quarter, unfortunately. Right. But uh, Tony Mesa, he's he's an established guy in that Warren offense, been running it for a long time. So it, it'll be another good test for Harlan. Yeah, I mean Harlan has a. 
a decently I'm not I don't want to say easy schedule because there's no easy game um, especially in high school but they play Warren Saturday then they're Steven Soto Holmes so if you get past Warren then you got Stevens little, then you got an undefeated it, Soto right it then. appears to be a little bit easier road yeah right and then you got Holmes afterwards who can score with the best of them they put up another 47 points this week against Stevens in a shootout over a gust that you that you went to so right um then you got we got Smith and Valley kind of talks about them but let's just talk about Larry Hill real quick Larry Hill gets his 300th win his 290th win at Smithson Valley. So he needs probably next year he'll get his 300th win unless they run the table and go into the playoffs and whatnot. Then, then he might get his 300th win at Smithson Valley alone uh, here this year too. But what can what can be said about Larry Hill? Uh, man, it's just a factory up there, right. <laughs> you know. Um, and, and it kind of speaks to the success. I mean, any any time you can stick around a place, you know, for for that long and and be that successful. I mean, you know. I don't know if you can say anything more. I mean, Larry Hill's a, a great football coach, so you know it's you know I'd I'd pick them to you know make a good run again this year. I know they had a bunch of turnover, and it was a tough way to end the season last year. They had a chance to kind of make it to that next round, be one of the last four or eight teams, whichever round it was. But um, yeah, just you know what a, what a milestone for him. So, but. You know, when you stick around that long, it, it's kind of expected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he's he's a great coach, and the way he advocates for his players. I mean, I just think of Trey, how he advocated for Trey Moore going to UTSA and telling Coach uh, Trailer like, "You will not be mistaken if you get him on your team." And now he's the best player on UTSA's entire squad. So, mm-hmm. the way he advocates for his players and and fights for them, just like they fight for him on the field, is is. Uh, unparalleled and, and is great to see especially from a high school coach uh alamo heights is next i think they're sixth i don't know why i have it a b c d instead of one two three four <laughs> but you know that's just how i put it in the run doing down. some algebra yeah it's fine <laughs> what's the variable here all right so alamo heights is four and oh three and oh in district uh 14 5 a i or one uh they defeated mccollum but that game was basically over over at halftime mccollum tried to make it close later in the game it was 49 28 but right. i think at half it was 49 to set or 42 to 7. Mm-hmm. um so i mean we talk about their uh they're the cream of the crop in that district all the time their last three games they've won 205 to 35. All right um so now but now they're taking on burbank who is the other undefeated team in this district and um one of the games of the night on Friday, for sure, at 7 p.m. over at the SAISD Sports Complex. I mean, is, Burbank has some players now. That Izzy Zapata is a great little receiver. Um, and they they are not going to go down easy, but Alamo Heights is just a wagon, man. They are, and it's an interesting matchup because, of course, you just look at it on paper, undefeated teams. But uh, the, over the past few weeks, Ron Redman has been able to build a lot of depth because, yeah, when, when they're up big, you know, they can get all these second string and even third string guys in to get some playing experience. And whenever, you know, you never wish it on anybody, but if somebody happens to go down like a Michael Terry the third or a Colin Ernst or something like that, you don't wish it on anybody. But if somebody has to miss some time or a play or two here and there just because they got a little stinger or they need to check on something, the, the next guy has – had has had plenty of playing experience right. and that's huge there's no there's no substitute for that so um i'm i'm curious about that one uh that's probably one that we're gonna circle and see if we can't maybe stick around and see the ending of that one but uh i i think uh yes burbank is improved but i would expect alamo heights to to still kind of uh, come out on top on that one, maybe by at least one or two scores. Yeah, it, it would, should be closer than than what we had at McCollum. Yeah, I would expect them to to run away with that one in the second half. Uh, they got Jeff Harlandale Edison coming up in their next three after Burbank. So this is probably their toughest test for the rest of the season is Burbank, and then maybe Harlandale. Harlandale competes hard for Coach Torres mm-hmm. down there. So, but I think that I think that Alamo Heights is gonna is they're gonna come to play like they always do for Coach Redman. So. Oh, yeah. um, they're six. Jay is seven. We've talked about them a little bit. They got Stevens. Uh, they just came off a very, very impressive win. Their first win ever against the Warren Warriors, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I read that in San Antonio Express News. So uh, they're playing. They defeated Warren 30 to 14. They got Stevens at Gus on Friday, 730. All those Friday kicks for Northside now 730 instead of seven o'clock mm-hmm. dealing with the bus driver issue over there. Uh, after that, though, they got Soto, Holmes, Harlan. So they got a tough, tough uh, stretch afterwards because Soto is, they're no joke, man. 
Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what Soto does coming off their bye week this week. Uh, just as you know, see if their defense can kind of keep playing at the level that they have been at so far. Again, this is now that we're getting into the meat of the district schedule, weeks five, six, and seven. You can really tell a lot about a football team and and you know what kind of push and run they're going to make uh, in those final weeks as as all the playoff picture starts to come into focus right and so soto's number eight uh they're coming off their bye week they're playing holmes if they can shut out holmes who is scoring on everybody yeah that would be extremely impressive because like holmes is not a team that is being shut out they're scoring 47 points and losses yeah they're just coming up short here and there if, if they could get a few more stops that you know shoot we might be talking about holmes right. you know and, and making some noise you know they would have two or three wins i would feel like uh, so, and again, that, you know, their quarterback, Isaac Martinez for Holmes, you know, he, he is a wizard at kind of running that read option, the, the quarterback power run, you know, he's, you know, he, he's kind of what makes that engine goes for the Huskies. Right. And so do the meat, they're really getting into the meat of their schedule. They still have Brennan left and their next three games after Holmes is Jay Harlan Taft. Mm -hmm. So you got two undefeated teams, uh, as we sit right now coming up in their next, uh, four games. Then you have Brennan, who has always been the or has been for the last few years the class of this district, right. still on their schedule. So they have a tough, tough road. Even though they're three and zero, and their point differential is plus one twenty five because they haven't allowed a point yet this season. So, pretty good way to start it out. Then we got Burbank. Talked about them a little bit. They're playing Alamo Heights. After that, though, they have McCollum, which is a tough game for them. They have Jefferson, who has improved this year. Then they have Harlandale uh, in their next three games after Alamo Heights. So they have a tough stretch of their. Uh, district right now too they're going to be probably battling it out for second place with McCollum mm -hmm. uh, in this district as Alamo Heights continues to run on the streak that they are on so yeah and if I mean I know if, I know we talked about Reagan and Johnson already I mean I, I, if we can go back and revisit Johnson just yeah. real quickly I mean Saturday it's a battle of unbeatens they're playing Roosevelt and I'm going to come out and just say I mean I feel like Roosevelt you know if if they aren't number 10 they should be because 11 you know they're they're four no they beat madison and watch out i mean their offense a little one-dimensional but brennan carroll they're running back for roosevelt watch out now we gotta have a talk to carlos because i thought they should have oh, yeah, been 10. right yeah i put them uh under warren so i have warren 10 and then on the next pa piece of paper i got honorable mention roosevelt <laughs> yeah i mean so this you know, Brennan Carroll will see what kind of defense, run defense Johnson has, uh, because this this kid has been impressive just through four games so far. 883 yards, 11 touchdowns. Those are some pretty heady numbers. Uh, so we'll kind of see what kind of you know run defense the Jaguars have, because you know it begins and ends with Brennan Carroll for the Rough Riders. Yeah, I mean Roosevelt, they're like 10 B. Like they yeah. they should be on the top 10, and they're one of the top or one of the 10 best in our area for sure. I mean, they're, they're having a fantastic kind of a renaissance season after, after the year they had last year. So uh, Warren is 10 for us right now. They lost to Jay. They're playing Harlan. We went over that. Uh, they've actually never beat Harlan. So um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see if they can pull that upset off. I'll put upset in air quotes because Harlan is – number one in the district yeah, right now so we'll see it's been a good start for the hawks and then uh warren also has taft brennan o'connor right after that so the sub tnl top 10 uh in order from one to ten is quero lavernia bernie jordanton somerset randolph is number six bandera uh hondo ingram and lytle as closes out the sub tnl top 10 still a lot of undefeated teams there as everyone kind of gets into the either starting or gets into the meat of their district schedule. So let's talk uh, TNL game of the week. On paper, uh, we've, it doesn't look like the best matchup, but when you look at two SAISD schools that are kind of bring your lunch pail, hard nose, blue collar mm -hmm. teams and with, with kids that give their all out and give their full effort no matter what, when you have Sam Houston against Edison, uh, Edison 0-4 right now, Sam Houston 2-2, two two, it, it bodes well for a competitive game yeah it's it's a young edison squad um a bunch of young young guys up front for the bear for the golden bears and then samad bunch actually you know a little bit it's kind of old school football what what we've seen in some of these other teams these guys do it week in week out you've got guys playing both ways samad bunch for edison 
uh, playing a little bit of defense, safety kind of last year. Now he's getting some offensive touches too, being a quarterback. So that's exciting to see. Sam Houston, they've always got some playmakers who can, you know, just kind of flash and and really, you know, make some good plays here and there on both sides of the ball. Um, they're one of their defensive backs, Jaden uh, Cervantes, is going to be one to watch. I think so. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun game down there at the Rock Pile on Thursday night. Yeah, so, I think so. Um, these t- these two teams, um, it, it's it's a young it's a young bunch, uh, a little bit on both sides. Edison more so. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would, it's that one's going to be another one, f- uh, another fun one too. So yeah, and talking to Coach Monreal over at uh, over at Edison, Samad Bunch had never played quarterback before. It's before amazing. This year. I mean, but, he, he came up to coach. He was like, hey, I want to try out for quarterback. I know we need one. He's like, all right, I'll try out. And apparently he was really good. He's still working on the mechanics, you know, that had to throw down the field and three-step drops and, you know, all the mm-hmm. things that go along with playing quarterback. But he's an athlete. Yeah. And he's apparently he's an athlete that is also in the uh, train to be a fireman. And, and goes, that. yeah. And so, he, yeah. And so he's just, that's the kind, those are the kind of kids they get over at Edison. They have 36 kids who are tough guys who just want to go out and play football and it makes them even closer that there's 36 dudes all pulling on the same rope in the same direction trying to get those victories so and samad's confident too heard him, you know <laughs> earlier this week where it's just like hey we get this one we get the train rolling exactly. and we're we're looking at a playoff spot so you gotta you gotta love that going exactly. in too exactly and then you have sam houston who uh, i think they're winning actually the season or the uh the all-time series against edison but it's it's not like Sam Houston comes in and trashes them every year. I think they beat them last year, and then Edison won the year before that. So this is always kind of a competitive push-and-pull kind of game, as most of the ones in the SAISD uh, district, I'm just going to call it, are. So. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, Sam, I always love Sam Houston games. Not, <laughs> I mean, their, their football is fun, but also I'm going to show my little – band nerd side here they're <laughs> well, they're marching band i love because it's also a little bit you know you have that florida a&m flavor and man they are a fun group got to they they always put on a good performance and so it's it's always fun to to see that band perform we know what uh zach's gonna be doing at halftime. yes i will be tuned in <laughs> tuned into the bands at halftime which is one of the best things we do on tnl is featuring the bands the dance teams the the cheerleading teams and kind of the whole community and that's why i love talking to the coaches uh, a little bit, we have Jack that goes out and get, gets interviews, which is a, a great of him to do. But I always love getting the coaches uh, aside and kind of getting outside of the X's and O's. And he taught Coach Monreal, who we're going to play first, he talks about kind of the community that they build around these schools. And that's why I love talking to him. I wasn't able to, to uh, hook up with Coach Jeremy Williams. He, his schedule, my schedule, didn't end up working out. But we do have his interview from Jack. But we'll get to the interviews right now. Zach's going to get out of here, go start putting his show in some – and some Friday Night Fever stuff together, yep. but we will hear from Coach Monreal right now. Uh, Sam Houston this week. Let's just briefly get into the matchup. You guys lost last year by two points. You won the year before, I believe. They, uh, I believe they went or they have the uh, edge in the series, thirty-three twenty-one. What kind of, you know, little rivalry you guys got going on, and how how itching, how much are you guys itching to get take the field this week? You know, it's it's a great rivalry type uh, game. Uh, we feel that. Uh, you know, us playing Sam Houston, uh, the Hurricanes, uh, it, it, I told our kids it's like a measuring stick because they are so athletic, uh, so well coached by Coach Williams. I've got so much respect for the program, you know, being a school uh, in, in the uh, east side, and, and they're going to bring the best, the very best to us. Uh, uh, so this is a great matchup for us, uh, a good measuring stick for us. We're young. We're very young. Uh, so it's, it's a great, great, it's going to be a great atmosphere. Coach, you guys had have had some hard fought battles uh, this year so far. Yes, sir. What is it? What is the character of your team? What is the the um, the attitude of your team as you guys go into your fifth game this season? You know, one of the biggest thing, uh, sir, is that uh, we we try to tell our young men because you know any type of sport right now, football is important for us. Uh, uh, teaching them. Uh, never to give up, you know, be resilient. Uh, you know, we've had some tough, tough uh, games and it's, it's, it's a process for us uh, is learning to, to work together be a family, grow, grow together. So this, this is the character of our team. Hey, be, do whatever you did, you do is never give up. 
because uh, that's life. You, you got to move forward. You don't go around uh, walls. You go through walls. And that's some of the things that we're, we're doing as a young team is uh, moving forward uh, with these obstacles that we have. You know, it's it's not it's not easy to to talk to these young men, especially not winning, you know, because winning uh, cures a lot of a lot of, uh, you know, things. Uh, but I absolutely think it does. <laughs> I think we're winning also with these young men. They're here at practice. I mean, we go early in the morning at six o'clock in the morning. They're here uh, and I appreciate them for being here uh, and, and being strong. Yeah, coach, coming off last week, uh, you guys never stopped fighting against Lanier. The, the, the turnover bug kind of just bit you down in the red zone a couple of times. Yes, coming sir. off something like that, going into Sam Houston, playing on under the lights on TNL against a team that you guys do have a little bit of a rivalry with. What kind of motivation is that for you guys as you come into this game? Big motivation. Uh, you know, again, uh, it's the process, and, and we tell our kids, you know, to keep going up. We can only go up, uh, and, and, and the biggest thing for us is to stick together, uh, come together as a family. We talk about family, unity, um, and everything, and, and that's the thing about us. You know, it was a tough loss last week, uh, tough to swallow. We 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 thought we could we could we had it there. I mean, but our turn turnovers, uh, mistakes killed us. So we got to eliminate, uh, minimize the mistakes for us. That's the key for victory. Um, stay in the ball game, control the ball. Uh, that's the only way for us uh, to do. And I think we've had a pretty good practice uh, these last two days. Coach, you guys, looking at your roster, you only have 36 kids on the team. It's it's. Uh, what are the good and the bad things about that? Does that make you guys closer as a family, as a community, and, and you know, kind of playing both sides, bleed together, go out, fight together, all that kind of thing? Yes, sir. It sure does. Uh, you know, it's that uh, tough football where, uh, you know, I, I think I got about eight guys going both ways. Uh, you know, I got a kid that uh, had to leave an emergency. So uh, my, my, my D tackle had to play a center for us last week. And it's just, it's just that growing and, 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 and you know what, they never complain. That's the great part of coaching these young men. You know, you could have that team that's not winning and they're griping and they're throwing helmets and they're giving tantrums and they're babies and, this team is young and, and, and they just want to, they're just happy to be here. And I'm just happy to coach them up. Uh, that's, that's, that's the fun part of, of, uh, of the season for us uh, as our coaches. We tell our coaches, Hey, motivate them. That's all we can do is, is bring them up. You know, let's talk about the goods. Let's talk about the good things that we did when we got back from the field house uh, that, that night, we never talked about the fumbles and this and pointed fingers. We talked about all the good things uh, that we saw, the unity, the uh, unitedness in the uh, huddles and the, in the uh, sidelines. If you saw us, I mean, we were, we're in the game all, all, all game long. And that's, that's the, the thing that we're coaching. And Coach, I love doing this part of the interview every week. Can you give me a few players, maybe a couple on offense, a couple on defense, that you think really embody the Edison Golden Bear spirit and also you'd like to highlight as we go to, closer to TNL? Yes, sir. I'd like to highlight uh, number 22. He's our uh, third-year uh, uh, letterman uh, on varsity. Uh, it's Ethan Nescamilla. This young man is uh, has a 3.7 uh, GPA. Uh, he, this young man uh, is top of his class. I think he's number 14. He's got uh, a good head over his shoulders. Uh, he's a yes sir, no sir type of kid. Plays uh, plays uh, a varsity on the wrestling team. Uh, he went to regionals, just missed it to go to stay for man points. Uh, but that young man uh, plays, uh, he's on the wrestling team. He's on the track team. He's on the football team. Um, he gives back to the community. He's our, he's our captain. He's our leader. He's our, our guy. Uh, and this young man, Ethan, uh, what I like about him, uh, we just did the peanut butter bowl, uh, bowl uh, uh, contribution. So he was head spear in that. Um, I found out that he, uh, on Thanksgiving, he, him and his uh, aunt and his family, you know, make food for the homeless here in the city of San Antonio. So those are a lot of things. And, and if you ask him, what do you want to do, Ethan? He says, I want to go to UT. He already knows where he wants to go. He wants to go to UT and uh, be an architect. And I say, why? He says, because, you know, I've been around construction. My dad is a hard working uh, dad, uh, blue collar guy, works on construction. And uh, I want to just build homes. I want to I want to do that. And I said, man, that's great. And he loves math. <laughs> so that young man. Uh, is, that's is that's rare these days, loving math. I mean, tough, uh, tough runner. Yeah, good, good kid. And the other kid uh, was my uh, strong safety uh, last year. 
he's just a junior. Uh, his name is Samad uh, Bunch. Uh, he's going to play quarterback. He's number five. He was my starting uh, a safety, free safety for me since he was a freshman. This is his third year as a varsity player. Um, it's rare here in San in, in this district to, to have a, in this part of the town to have African American, but he's he's come here because he's in the fire academy. Uh, Edison is is has a unique program. They have the uh, fire uh, EMS uh, EMT and fire uh, program where these young men really go to the S, uh, San Antonio Police Academy uh, over here in uh, Van Army. They you get bused at seven o'clock in the morning. And uh, they get, I mean, at six o'clock in the morning, they board the bus and they go to the academy for three hours and they come back for lunch and then they get to their classes as seniors. So uh, Job Bunch will be doing that next year as a senior. Um, I've been to the academy. Great thing. We're the only uh, school in SAISD or in San Antonio that has affiliation with the uh, with the fire academy. Uh, so these young men get that opportunity here. So he came in as a transfer uh, from uh, from his home school, and he's in the fire program. And this young man is also top of his class, uh, but he's also a baseball guy. So loves baseball. That's his that's his passion. That's his love. He plays center field for us. He's been playing varsity baseball since yeah, since he was a freshman. When I got him, he came in as a freshman, and and I looked at his ability and his his um, his mind. And I said, God dang, he says, coach, I want to be a two-way play, uh, two player in college, just like Deion Sanders and all these other uh, players that uh, played. And I said, wow, man, this is a five foot. At that time, he was probably about five foot six, five foot seven. Um, and and this year, what, what's, what's made it special is, hey, coach, I know you guys need a quarterback and can I try out for it? And I said, well, you know, heck yeah, you can try out and did really well in our spring ball. And uh, also went out uh, and we've had our 707 uh, summer uh, leagues and has it really impressed us. I mean, he still needs us. He's very, very raw, but uh, his athleticism, we got to put the ball on, the, on our athletic guy at kids. Uh, so he's he's taken that reins and uh, I appreciate that for, from him. Uh, he's he's helped us uh, at least uh, put some board up, uh, some uh, numbers on the board. Coach, I did a, a story last year about a young man that was on your team named David Cardenas. Um, oh, yeah. And it, boxer. It, yeah, the boxer, man. So in that story and, and through the things you just told me and through kind of the osmosis that I've kind of just been around uh, San Antonio a little bit, you learn that the kids that you get at Edison are those kinds that are just hard nosed, hard working, kind of just bring your lunch pail kind of guys that anything you need anything you can ask they're going to do it with with a smile on their face maybe they maybe a cuss word under their breath but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah but they'll, but they'll get it done they is that is done. that kind of the right inference there yes sir absolutely man i had the honor and privilege of having david cardinals play football for me uh and he came out because at the beginning he was all basketball and and boxing and he came in the senior year and says coach i want to try football and i said heck yeah i mean and he was wonderful for us uh did well i think he kicked uh brought a, a punt return all the way back for six so you know he was a great influence to our to our class uh last year uh, great story oh yeah but yeah it's just yes. those th those kinds of kids those man. kind of those kind of kids and and that's what i'm grateful for with uh samad he his he goes by jaw ja bunch uh his dad he comes from a pedigree of of, of uh, family members that uh, went to highlands and played at highlands and were you know have made it to the uh to college and 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 he wants to really i mean he nonstop with him he's every summer he's out there playing baseball he's somewhere in some camp trying to get his, his skills right coach tell me a little bit about the um community around you guys the school the the parents the boosters how has all of that kind of helped you as you've when you started in 2017 to now kind of building this program and trying to get it back on the right track well you said it's it's ironic that you say 217 but I've been here this is the only high school I know I've been here 20 what 21 years I've been a head coach since 2017 but I've worked myself from a freshman to a JV to a uh, defensive coordinator all the way to uh, head coach and I had when our head coach left in 2017 wanted to take me with him I said you know what uh, I want to give it a shot and and and, and you said the community I, I bleed black and gold 
uh, love this community. They're always supportive. Uh, man, we're having a big pep rally tomorrow, and you're going to see that that community come together. Uh, the, the, the community of the of just the school itself, also. I mean, our teachers. We've ha we've got uh, the Papa Mama Bear. Uh, 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 a program here with our teachers that have adopted uh, all our football players. And it's just not to give them a goodie bag. It's to talk to them about their grades, their attendance, their anything they need. Uh, we have that program going here. Um, uh, it's just awesome, uh, the spirit here. Uh, and then the community outside, uh, they, they've always been supportive, and I appreciate that. Win or lose, you know, I have, I've had alumni come and talk to our kiddos. Uh, we have FCA uh, here at, at Edison High School, uh, and I appreciate that, too. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can to get these kids, you know, being a great citizens of this community, uh, doing something uh, with their lives. You know, I, you can tell a lot of these guys, none of these guys are Division One players. I, I know that. they. I understand that. I know the percentage. But what you got is that blue-collar kid that's just going to, keep working and working and working and just get through high school and, 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 and get through athletics. Coach, last question for you. Um, TNL gives us the opportunity and, and the public who watch an opportunity to kind of see something they might not see and see kids they might not know and that it incorporates the band, it incorporates the, the dance teams and all of that stuff. What is it that you guys are are happy about as you go on to TNL and, and what is it that you want to highlight? What is it that you want the public to see as it comes to your program, your school, your community? The biggest thing that that would bring my joy is my boys, my my my, my athletes. You know, showcasing them and and their hard work and and them being here. That's it. I mean. I, I really love all my my athletes. I, I really call. I don't even call them athletes. I call them my boys, my my men, my my. They're they're my heart, and so that's. It's not it's not anything else but them that I would love to showcase uh, in, 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 uh, in and 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 our school. I mean, our, our school. That's about it, sir. It's them. All right, Coach. Well, I greatly appreciate the time. Uh, I can't wait to see you on the sidelines on uh, on Thursday. Yes, you'll be there. I will be there. I'll be on the sidelines. Hopefully I'll get, be get, hey, giving you a trophy at the end of it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much to the coach of the Edison Golden Bears for joining me a little bit yesterday. So hopefully, like I said, hopefully they're getting their first TNL trophy. So uh, we'll jump over to the Edison players now. Uh, Jack Green, our intrepid, wonderful uh, photographer, went over and got uh, Ethan Escamilla. He's a running back over, a running back and linebacker, as you'll hear. Uh, over at Edison, and then Samad Bunch, the new quarterback, former DB. Uh, he actually still goes a little bit both ways because, like I said, they have 36 players. A lot of players are going both ways on that team. So we'll hear from them right now. What position do you play? A running back and linebacker? Running back, linebacker. Uh, which one do you prefer more? You, do you like running or you like hitting people? I like hitting people more now. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, – what did you play last year? Did you play – Just uh, running back. Just running back last year? Yeah. So you kind of switched over to linebacker and hitting people is it. Yes, sir. So um, – Season hasn't quite gone as well as what you guys want, but you could certainly see every week that there's some improvement going on. From your perspective, what are you seeing out of these guys every single week when you guys take the field? I see that all, all these guys are increasing their performance every day. Every day we have practice. I can see they're getting added every day. They want to win. They have the drive to win. And I'm just waiting for the, the win we take. Hopefully this week we take that win against the Hurricanes. Um, how have, how have you used your leadership? Because you know what this program is all about. You've been on the winning teams, and now you're very young. you got to get a lot of these young guys ready. What are you doing to get these young guys prepped for, you know, obviously the second half of the season? I always try to stop the horse playing, try to make sure they lock in, try to make sure they pay, they pay more attention in practice, because practice makes perfect. you got to practice to have a good game this week. When you take the field, whether it be game or, or or whatever, what do you like about taking the field, especially with this defensive unit that you guys have got? What do you like about these guys? That the, the, the defense really takes stay together. We communicate. I mean, we got each other's back no matter what happens on the field. Um, you get the chance to showcase your talents on, on TNL. How special is that for you, your senior year? You get one last chance on television for all of South Texas to see. What's that mean to you? It means everything to me, sir. If I can, if I'm able to I'm able to perform the way um, I'm, able, I'm able to perform and show my talents to everybody on the news and everything. Um, 
from a defensive standpoint, don't give away any secrets, but what do you guys need to do in order to slow down a, a, a very explosive Sam Houston team? You got you to stop their, uh, their pass game and, and contain their um, outside runs. So um, I'll ask you this question. Let's see if you – the character of these young men, for you guys to be 0-4, it's 6.30 on a Tuesday morning, and yet every single one of you guys are back out here sweating, putting in the work to get better. What does that say about your teammates? No, my teammates, I just want to win. They're dedicated to, to the game. No matter what happens, win or lose, I just still want to play the game and still striving to get the W. From your perspective, quarterback, when did you find out that you were going to be the quarterback, the lead quarterback for this team this year? Around uh, spring ball. Uh, I started working out with uh, one of the old quarterbacks here, Brandon Gonzalez. He's now at Wayland Baptist. He really uh, mentored me and helped me get uh, what's the word? Get prepared to be able to play quarterback and get in the mindset of a quarterback. The more of a, uh, it's a more leadership position on the field. So I had to I had to adjust from being the uh, uh, safety. I played safety, so I'm used to reading the quarterback side. Now I'm trying to throw defenders off. On what, on what I'm trying to do, instead of instead of reading, what, sorry, instead of reading off of like their eyes and stuff. When when you're playing quarterback, it's more of a react. It's uh, it's more the their game planning. They're more game planning for what you're gonna do instead of you're you're uh, expecting what they're gonna do. How hard has this transition been for you to go from safety? Uh, to it's been, I would say, uh, it's not as hard as I thought it would be, but it's definitely a difficult challenge because uh, 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 I've never played quarterback in my life, but I've always wanted to try to step up and play the position. And uh, I've seen, uh, when I was younger, I used to love watching uh, Michael Vick when he was on the Eagles and RG3. So I thought that I could, I could maybe try one day and now I'm, now I'm doing that and trying to uh, go play college ball. All right, so you're four games in to your quarterback role. Um, how would you assess what you have done at, at quarterback so far? Uh, I feel like it's uh, been bittersweet because uh, although although we haven't gotten a win yet, we've, been, we've developed a lot. Uh, we've, we're, coming, we're growing stronger as a team. We're, uh, uh, I'm not making as many mistakes as I was in the first weeks. I'm learning that uh, sometimes I need to I need to tuck I need to tuck and run instead of just uh, just forcing stuff. Uh, I'm learning how to uh, progress through the pocket better. I'm getting better uh, chemistry in my O line and my running backs so that we don't have as many turnovers or false starts. And I'm getting a better connection with my receivers. What does it say about the character of these guys? The the, the that you're 0 and 4, and yet here it is 6:30 in the morning, and everybody is coming out here putting in the work to get better. What's that say about these guys? Uh, we're all dedicated. We're all, we're all dedicated to, to get that first win, sir. We're, we are. We we believe that there's still a chance that we can make the playoffs. We believe that uh, we, although we are 0 and 4, we are still one of the top teams in our district. We believe that uh, if we win this game here, we're gonna get hot and get the train moving, and that's gonna lead to a playoff berth. Without giving away any secrets, what's this offense need to do in order to be able to beat the Sam Houston team on Thursday night? Uh, discipline. That's about it. I say we stay disciplined. We should win this ball game, sir. Uh, and then now we're going to hear from uh, Jeremy Williams, the coach of Sam Houston, and the players over there as well. It is Jaden Cervantes. He's a safety. He's a junior. So you'll hear his voice second. So first will be Jeremy Williams. Second will be Jaden Cervantes. And third will be Amir Calhoun. He's the quarterback over there as well. You win, loss, win, loss. Mm -hmm. Consistency seems to be the biggest issue right now facing this team. It was like, what are you guys doing right now to kind of get that consistency going on both sides of the ball? Uh, we locking back in on the details. Uh, that's one thing I felt we were missing our first couple of weeks was the small things. The small things could lead to big things in the game. So that's what's been happening to us, man. We've been missing out on all the little details and it's showing up on Thursday and Friday night. Does it get frustrating from a coach because it was like there are times I've seen this team play when it was like boom, 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 touchdown. It was like, why aren't we doing this every single series? Um, does it get frustrating? And what, what do you tell your team on the sideline when it was like, you know what, 
you've got all the capability. You guys got just got to go it's, out and do it's it. It's definitely frustrating. Uh, what we talk to them about is having a positive mindset, uh, having the we over me mentality. And I think once we develop that, uh, the sky's the limit for this team. I mean, I feel like we, we're playing as individuals right now. Once we come together as a team, then we're going to take off like we're supposed to. Um, four games into the season, what have you learned about these young men? Uh, I know that they're resilient. I know that we get strong in the fourth quarter. Uh, I know that we're going to fight to the end. I know that as long as we got Amir Calhoun, we're going to be in the game uh, for sure. Uh, and I believe in our defense. I think we got one of the best defenses in San Antonio. Uh, as long as they can keep on getting stops, we keep getting the ball in the offense hands, we keep getting those opportunities, I just think that it's just going to take off for us soon, sooner than later. You get a chance to showcase your talents, not only on this, for this football team, but for this whole community uh, on TNL. How special is that for this community to be able to be on television for the entire South Texas to see? All right, man, it's a blessing, man. We're happy about it. We appreciate you guys for coming out. Uh, and like, I just, you know, I pray that my kids understand the importance of it. They understand the significance of it and that they come out and they fight and they show the east side who the real Sam Houston is. Um, without giving away any secrets, give me a couple of keys to victory in order to, to be able to up a feisty uh, Edison team that you're facing. Uh, not beating ourselves, uh, paying attention to the details, our offense executing every series we're out, uh, defense getting back on track, uh, just being a dominant defense that I know that they can be. Ups and downs, ebbs and flows. How has it been from your perspective? What, do you, what are you seeing from this team uh, as the season has progressed? Uh, I see really big improvement throughout the season. We just need to stay focused, really uh, maintain, you know. Uh... <laughs> no, go ahead. Start it, start it over again. So what, what do you guys need to do in order to keep this, this, the consistency out there on that field every single week? Really just go hard at practice. That's where it really all started at practice. And then just keep a high mentality positive mentality yes sir does it get frustrating because you guys know how talented you are does it get frustrating when it was kind of like you have a drive where it's either a three and out or the defense gives up a long drive from you're one of the leaders on this defensive unit so how frustrating is that that it was like guys we're better than this let's let's just play at our level well sometimes it do get really frustrating because i know how good we are and how explosive we get so yeah it really we, we just talk and then come next drive, come harder. If this team, especially on this defensive side, if this defense puts it all together and plays a complete game, is the sky the limit for you guys? I mean, is this a team that's going to go deep in the playoffs? Yes, sir. We, uh, our defense, we really big on defense for real. We really want shutouts. That's all our main goal is shutouts, shutouts, shutouts. So, yeah, we will for sure go far in the playoffs. We execute. When you take the field, whether it be in a game or in a practice, what you like about these dogs? I just like how we just all have fun, like brothers, and come to play. We uh, push each other every day at practice. So, yeah, that's what I really like about us. Um, you get to showcase your talents on television this Thursday night for all of South Texas to see. Um, how special is that for you? You get one last ride, you get a chance to showcase so that everybody that doesn't generally get to go out to a Sam Houston game, now they get to see what Sam Houston football is all about. How special is that for you? Uh, that's very special to me because uh, like people like uh, my homeboy was saying, <laughs> like my QB was saying, they really look down on Sam. So I would like to go out there and show them what we're really about. Um, without giving away any secrets, what's this defense got to do in order to, uh, to shut down a, a feisty Edison team? We just really need to uh, not let them know, you know, no first downs, no nothing, just execute, execute, execute. From the leader on the offensive side of the ball, it's you guys have shown flashes of nobody's ever going to beat us. And then there are times that it was just like, OK, you guys need to get back to the practice field. It was like, what's been the, the biggest inconsistent problem with the offense this, uh, this season so far? Yes, sir. Um, just getting, just having, keep coming out here, uh, practicing, running, running around the field like we do in the game, and just get back on being consistent. What do you like when you go out in the, on whether it be game day or a practice? What do you like about this offensive unit that you take the field with? What do you like about these dogs? Just playing with my brothers and just going out there having fun and enjoying our time and winning. Does it? I ask this of coach. Does it get frustrating because? I've seen the way you guys are capable of playing. Does it get frustrating from a quarterback standpoint? It was like, 
Guys, if we just did what we're, what we're supposed to do and execute the way we're supposed to do, nobody's beating us. Yes, sir. I, I have them at a high standard and just more mature and no uh, playing around in our practice. Um, what's the ceiling for these for this offensive unit? How good can you guys be if you guys put it all together? Oh, we'd be really great. Everybody just got to execute, run through practice, and um, do everything 100%. Um, you guys get to showcase your talents on television this Thursday night for yes, all of South Texas to see. How special is that for you as a senior that, you know, everybody gets a chance to now to see what I'm, what not only you're made of, but all the Sam Houston football team is? It's really good because everybody can see what Sam Houston is really is. Everybody talk bad about Sam Houston, but we're really a good, really good team. Um, without giving away any secrets, what's this offense got to do in order to be able to score points and, and to get a victory against Edison? Just Ed just execute, keep the energy high, and run around the field. And so we thank the Sam Houston players, the Edison players, the coaches, everybody for giving us a little bit of access, a little bit of their time this week uh, for Jack Green to go out there, get some interviews and whatnot. I can't wait for this TNL matchup. Like I said, with, with Zach, and we thank Zach for his time as well. He'll be back on Friday. Um, it, when you look at it on paper, it's not a matchup that maybe makes you salivate at the mouth, but it's one that these kids love and the rivalry that they love. And so just getting uh, some, of these, some of these smaller schools that we have in San Antonio, some airtime and getting their bands and their cheerleaders, everybody, the community, um, a little bit of airtime. And, and so everyone can see how hard they do work is, is something that I'm going to cherish as we get onto the field tomorrow night. So that's all we got for you today on the High School Hype Squad edition of the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. We'll be right back here on Friday, breaking down the upcoming week of football. Roadrunners traveling to Knoxville, Tennessee to take on the Volunteers in a what's going to be a hostile environment, especially with the uncertainty around UTSA. So we got that uh, preview of that coming up on Friday. Cowboys working to keep their dominant streak going. They're playing the Cardinals as like, I think they're 13 or 12 point favorites right now. So expecting another dominant showing from the Cowboys and what we're really learning about the Cowboys as they played such weak competition to open up this season with San Francisco on the horizon in just a couple of weeks. And then we'll take a look at the Aggies and the Longhorns as well as both of them trying to stay hot and continue their uh, run to their respective titles. So that's going to be on Friday. Quick reminder, you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And we have video now, so you can see my wonderful uh, complexion. So um, we got that for you. And uh, Zach and Don and Chuck are all on board and love that we have video. We can now talk directly to you. You can see who's talking. So YouTube version has come a long way since we started this. It's got video elements, as you just saw from all of the interviews and sound bites and some other video plugged in along the way. So we'll keep all that going and we'll keep advancing this uh, operation as we continue uh, to move forward. So please download, subscribe, rate, review, unsubscribe, resubscribe, re-rate, re-review, give us a five-star rating, give some feedback. Feedback is a gift, as Chad Millman always says. We'll see you Friday right here on the Sneakers Cleats podcast.